Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Success Mantra Explains. In the last video, we talked about alternative medicine laws that were passed in the monsoon session of parliament this year. In the same session, certain other laws were passed amending the healthcare system of India. In fact, correction, uh, some amendments were made in parliament. A lot of other changes have been made by authorities have been there have been changes in rules that medical authorities have passed which have a wide ranging impact on the healthcare sector particularly medical education so let's find out what's happened before we do uh, the link to the previous video on the alternative medicine laws of 2020 can be found in the description below and of course you can see it on the title card so without further ado, let's look at these changes. Existing laws that have changed include first the medical termination of pregnancy amendment bill of 2020, which has made some changes to the law of abortions in India. Then of course, there has been an amendment in the epidemic diseases act now the epidemic diseases act which has been widely invoked this year ye law hai, uh, on the basis of which lockdown was instituted in most places of the country or is law ke andar bhi amendments dekhe hai humne because this is a very old law this is a law that was passed during the british era so obviously some changes had to be made in it now we have also seen the Indian Medicine Central Council amend its rules for postgraduate Ayurveda education and this has been a little controversial because it allows general surgery to be performed by postgraduate students of Ayurveda. And lastly, we've seen the minimum requirements for annual MBBS admissions regulations of 2020. So let's see what these laws are all about. Now the medical termination of pregnancy amendment has changed the upper limit of abortions from 20 weeks to 24 weeks. So earlier upper limit before uh, special permission was needed for an abortion was 20 weeks. This limit has been extended by four more weeks. The purpose behind this is of course, uh, very frequently a woman might not know if she's pregnant or not. So uh, they've been given some more breathing room. Then uh, this law has been introduced to promote safe abortion practices and it aims to give women greater bodily autonomy, sorry, and uh, allows them to help with unwanted pregnancies and reduce maternal mortality rate. So by legally recognizing a possible abortion with up to 24 weeks, it allows women who are seeking these abortions to do so legally in a manner that is uh, much more safe than it otherwise would be. The Epidemic Diseases Amendment of 2020 uh, has been passed with basically the aim of punishing and preventing attacks on healthcare workers. So guys, we all remember early during uh, COVID when COVID was still new, we had a lot of stigmatization of health workers where in a lot of places, Delhi and Indore uh, off the top of my head, healthcare workers were being discriminated against, they were being attacked, sanitation workers, nurses, doctors, they all uh, complained that they were being attacked, resident, well, residential welfare associations were preventing doctors from coming back to their houses and uh, we saw a lot of things that hindered our fight against COVID-19. So government has taken cognizance of these activities and obviously this is not a desirable situation. So under the Epidemic Diseases Act itself, changes kiya gaye hain jo uh, aise actions ko bahut strictly penalize karenge. So firstly, up to five years of imprisonment has been prescribed as a 
punishment for attacks on healthcare workers. Attacks on healthcare workers will now be punished whether these attacks take place at their workplace or even at their homes. Fines and imprisonment are also prescribed for damage to property that is involved in healthcare functions. So whether this is ambulance, equipment, anything else. And lastly, compensation provisions have been included where any damage to life or property has been caused. Now the Indian Medicine Central Council Postgraduate Ayurveda Education Amendment has amended the rules of the Indian Medicine Central Council to allow postgraduate students of Ayurveda to perform general surgery. Now, uh, although Ayurveda students have already been performing surgery, they've been performing Ayurvedic surgery, that is surgery which is found in the ancient Ayurvedic texts. So for those of you that may not know, Ayurveda is an ancient Indian system of medicine under which surgery was also performed. In fact, one of the world's earliest surgeons was uh, Sushrut, an ancient Indian medical philosopher. So surgery is not new to Ayurveda. This is not a new concept, but it is a new concept that the general surgical practices, jo hai, that is modern surgical practices, are now going to be performed by postgraduate students of Ayurveda. So the Indian Medical Association objects to this practice, uh, the Indian Medical Association, which is the association of MBBS doctors, your uh, mainstream modern doctors. Uh, now they have complained ki uh, this amounts to mixopathy. Ki aap uh, jo do alag systems of medicine hai, aap wo unko fuse kar rahe hai and this is going to lead to dilution of modern medicine agar aisa hoga because their complaints are that Ayurvedic doctors are not MBBS doctors because they are not trained and they do not have the background in modern medical science, they should not be involved in modern medical procedures. Now the, the body of Ayurveda doctors however believes that since they already perform surgery, they are skilled enough to also perform general surgery. So guys, lastly we have the minimum requirements for annual MBPS admissions regulations of 2020. These have been issued by the National Medical Commission which was set up only last year and this regulates medical education and practice. Right? So you could say its function is a little bit like the bar council for uh, us lawyers. So now under these new regulations Pehle jo medical colleges hote the, to set them up there were very onerous land requirements that you need this much land such and such for this and this purpose. Ab jo special requirements for land hai, these have been removed. So now only general requirements that uh, need to be met, no special requirements for land need to be met by a medical college. An overhaul of teaching departments and essential facilities for students have been included. So a lot of facilities that necessarily must be had for students have been included in the regulations. These facilities would have to be met for any new medical colleges that seek to be set up. Now the controversial aspect of this bill is that permissible intake of non-medical faculty has been reduced. So, you can how non-medical faculty ko inculcate kar sakte hai, ye kam ho gaya hai. Uh, This has led to some controversy because the non-medical faculty hote hai, they are uh, as a standard practice they are included as for non-clinical subjects. So doctors obviously will learn clinical subjects which will involve medical sciences ka core but they will also learn non-clinical subjects related to for example maybe chemistry and pharmaceuticals and it is standard practice of course to have non-medical faculty for such subjects 
Now this used to be 30% under the new regulations they've made it 15% and so this has been an area of some controversy. Uh, I personally suspect we will likely see maybe further clarification and a further uh, notice circular or entire uh, order issued by the relevant authority but for now this is the position and this wraps up our series on the healthcare amendments and uh, medicine laws of 2020. I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, please like the video, leave any comments you may have below, subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more and make sure you hit the bell icon to be notified every time we upload a video. I look forward to recording another of these sessions for you guys again. Until then, take care. Stay safe.